What to say, what to say. Welcome everybody to uh, what I hope to be a new show. Felt like there was a gap on the weekend where there was no videos or YouTube topical stuff for me to watch. So I figured maybe I would do a weekly roundup. And of course, feature some of my art. I don't know. Still trying to figure things out. But. The whole CERN thing. Um, and my. For those of you that follow me on social media, know my uh, working hypothesis that, uh, you know, sometime back in around 2011, possibly previously. Uh, when they fired up the particle accelerator that the people at CERN collapsed what was once my and some of you who remember it uh, the universe that we came from and some of us survived and kind of fell into this adjacent universe so the universe is the theory uh, multiple universes, right? That there there's many universes that are slightly divergent from ours. Uh, so the closer the universe to us is the, the closest, uh, both in space and time. If you want to kind of if you want to. Um, to have that concept in your head it's closeness in space it's adjacent to us if you were would uh, the most adjacent one is the closest so it's not that too far different than than the one we're in but it's different enough uh, you'd hear like things about um what is it it's been a long day at work so I'm trying to I'm trying to riff off off of what's what I've been thinking about in my head uh, sometimes it's not always there on the t it's on the tip of my head but I can't get it out so <clears throat> um, the um, Mandela effect she's I'm losing it here uh, so things like the Mandela, Mandela effect you remember some people remember things a certain way and I know a lot of them can be explained away. But that's like a little thread that pulls at you. As we're seeing the more, you know, over the last 10, what, 11 years now from 2011. See, it would have happened before then because a lot of what you're seeing now, which I find on one level gloriously amusing uh, obviously on the other level horrifying see there was a lot of us that were in uh, the social media internet space <clears throat> and I'm not going to divulge where you know I was doing this but there was a lot of us that were fighting this battle and had already slipped into another adjacent universe that seemed a little strange. And see, nobody... Nobody... Like, the masses and people and... Like, nobody really knew about it. You talked about how... Um, I remember talking to my... Uh, someone close to me, who was in the medical profession, about how they were going to be soon... having to dance around the uh, gender issue uh, even though it makes no medical sense uh, of course I was scoffed at and, uh, and derided and like there's no way that would happen yada 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 the usual the usual I'm used to it um, and of course flash forward a number of years and here we are so I find it amusing that um, 
on one level, uh, and to deviate a little bit, uh, what you're watching is I like to. I'm obviously an artist, and that's my first passion. Um, so I'm still trying to get a setup here for a studio that I would again film myself, maybe while I'm doing art or mix it up, maybe showcase different art while I'm talking. Uh, I'll work on it. If you have ideas, let me know. What would be what would be cool? Um, time is limited, obviously, but. Uh, yeah, I'd like to get a simple setup here so I can film myself again, but it's just... I have other priorities going on at the moment, but I'm getting there. Um, not to mention that video hasn't really been my top priority, but... I don't know, it's fun. I like to rant, so... If you want to hear my rants, uh... You know, keep tuning in. It'd be fun. Uh, and I kind of want to get into more... More actual rants... Especially for this weekly uh, show. Some sort of idea of like maybe I'll do some art stuff on during the week and focus on that and then do a weekly roundup. We'll see how much fun it is. Uh, this week's been whew, quite a blast. But we'll get to it. So this is sort of the piece that I'm doing is called CERN and it is a piece I wanted to do to represent um, sort of society breaking apart at the seams and see as it goes along uh, so if you like watching someone paint and then someone rant about what's going on in the world then this is your show uh, so where was I uh, so I was talking about oh yeah so basically uh, back in the Tumblr days, and I was not on Tumblr, but I witnessed it. So, all the stuff you're seeing on Twitter migrated over from from Tumblr, and that was the sort of the beginning of the of the big push. Uh, so the big move that the establishment made, the the adopting of the woke mindset as a as a lever, as a mechanism to Ex exert control by one of the you know biggest divisive concepts that you could could come up with because it had built us up over time it had won these battles that I'm referring to now early on uh, it had successfully taken over uh, internet spaces where you know the masses weren't really paying it too much attention and started and from there as it was doing this was weaving its way into um, <clears throat> mass media and popular culture it was very symbiotic at the same like it was all simpatico it was all at the same time it was organized uh, many people even who were battling it didn't see it that way and didn't heed my advice while we were battling and we lost this was precisely the time that the strategy of ignoring and ridiculing but mostly just ignoring would have been the best strategy uh, I think giving it attention is what gave it the fuel to the fire again no one listened to me no one ever listens to me, and here we are. Uh, many of the people that I was, um, I don't want to say battle with, I don't know what that'll do to the algorithm, but um, not obviously a battle in any real sense, but a, a ideological battle. Um, you know, they, they just reacted to it, um, they reacted to it as as voraciously as people are reacting to it now, like the the anti woke, as you will. Same thing. I saw this the same way. Now, obviously, now you know, flash forward 10, 11 years, and wokeness is in every institution across the globe. Uh, all the media has been become woke. It's just it's it's everywhere. It's it's 
fully encompass everything. So, I mean, this is before Evergreen, so I, I also find it somewhat amusing that Evergreen is what made it famous. So it's almost around the time Evergreen was sort of the the climax of this. I wasn't connected to Evergreen in, in any sense of the word. But that was sort of <coughs> uh, the crescendo of of those fights. I think I had been gone from that fight lo- knowing that we ceded too much ground. Uh, we, were, we were in a different universe. I was in a different universe. Things didn't make sense. Uh, not everyone could see it, so it felt like it was a completely different world. Uh, it felt like a co- completely different world for me. Not completely, obviously, like I'm saying, this is like a, a shift over to the next dimension. So, my theory obvi- of, obviously, um, my theory is that that first collapse was the beginning of a series of uns- of destabilizing the universes that were going into each universe that also has a CERN that's also doing these same things and it's a, and it's a destabilizing event that is now making each universe uh, destroy itself and, and, and crumble and so we keep going down the universes and it's sped up over the last decade and possibly going faster in the next in the last three years um that's why some of us are standing around shaking our head going what the f is going on I'm wondering what's going on and this is i have that as well and like i said i've been fighting this for almost a decade um so that's the theory this is what uh kind of ruminated my head about why i wanted to make this this video i wanted to do a recap of of what has changed uh in the world because no one believes my hypothesis but let's see cern fired up on a tuesday i believe and let's look at what's happened this week. What has happened this week since CERN fired up the old particle accelerator? It's been an interesting week, hasn't it? And uh, I'm recording this just after a day of the week ending of more... Hmm. I don't want to... I don't even know if I can say this on YouTube... I like get my channel not that it's a big channel but do I want to get it just removed well what's the point of even doing this video if I say it uh a certain uh yeah fuck it the uh, POTUS the the commander in chief if you will uh his son uh, 4chan leaked a bunch of Hunter Biden's um, images and emails and text messages and whoo boy that's like it's a capper so I'm gonna you know that's a capper of a week of craziness and you're gonna tell me that we live in a world that this is not another universe from some of us you know the people that are native to this universe would think nothing of it seems fine call them blue, blue pill people uh red pill people are really just visitors from another dimension and for us visitors from another dimension you're you're gonna tell me that this is not a different universe where the president of the united states his son has videos and pictures and of him smoking cracking and you know doing stuff with prostitutes and like a whole bunch of other stuff that's in there and very concerning nicknames for his father which is the president are you going to tell me that this is a normal universe this is the way it was for some of us back in the day 
uh, that this is the same universe, that, that this makes any sort of sense, that this would happen. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I know, there's an establishment, yada yada yada. But this is a headbanger, like, this is a head scratcher. This, this doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Not in any, any. Yeah, we live in postmodernity, but modernity. But even postmodernity modernity has its limits. This is just absurd. We're living in an absurd universe. Living in an absurd universe that had uh, a talking alligator on Twitter who got suspended for the one of the lamest jokes ever. And I think it was just a quote. By the way, free Dr. Roller Gator. So, this is the capper. You know, you go on social media and, you know, it's entertaining as hell. It's baffling. You get blue people on the liberal leftist operatives claiming it's all fake. You know, this trove of, trove of evidence. Um, and you're left sitting here going, how is this, how is this real life? Um, what else happened this week? So let me see. It's like, it was hard. I had all this stuff planned out. Uh, I probably should have wrote them all down when I was thinking about it yesterday. It would remind me next time to do this on a Saturday, record it on Saturday, before some crazy news breaks on Sunday and I've forgotten all about it. So, we got this more Hunter Biden stuff coming up, and this time they're not suppressing it, or at least not, not like the first time, and of course, uh, that can mean probably couple things, but mainly that uh, you're watching the establishment. The establishment. Uh, let the president sort of take the heat for one. So it's clear that they uh, they know they have a losing position with this. And to, uh, to the people who are on the side that get that there's an establishment and what I'm talking about and that there's plans and they're trying to what do you say trying to reset the system with some great reset that every single thing is coordinated everything is like this uh, the conspiracy theory type mentality that um, people that are blue pilled will throw at you uh, where they think you you think everything is talked about and planned behind closed doors in a secret meeting of evil villains it's not like that now they certainly do talk behind closed doors they do talk but it's not that every single uh, thing is 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 organized and colluded with see it's ideolo ideology you don't need to do this if you believe in an ideology if you believe in a fundamental core of uh, the ideology think of it as a cult like this is our core this is what we want to do you know you have your davos meeting and you set up you know very thoroughly what the plans are what the goals are and it's really goals like what are your goals what do we want to do and then each person goes out and does it in their own way. So you're not going to get a coordinated attack uh, and everything is going to be, you know, oh, we got feedback, let's go back into the war room and, and, and talk about it. No, you don't need that. You've activated your operatives, the, the brainwashed operatives that know that they have to toe <coughs> the line. They know what they have to do in order to gain this utopia 
so everybody's on board. You don't need to coordinate. You do not need to conspire consistently. The conspiracy, if you want to call it a conspiracy, is that there's plans, and there's a bunch of people that are on board. And when they're on board, they're all just working towards the same goal. Think of it as like a corporation. You try to get everybody on board with a narrative, with a framing... Everyone knows the goal. The goal is to produce this widget. The goal is to make this widget sound really good to every customer that you talk to. And your goal is to serve the company. You don't need to be told at every single... You don't need to be micromanaged on every single interaction that you do. Some companies sadly do do this. But you don't need to be micromanaged in everything you say, everything you do. Everything that goes on. You have... A plan. You're trained, as you will. You could call it brainwashing. Uh, keep, that's the believing the ideology, and the ideology becomes paramount first and foremost. So, if you have this world vision and you share it with a bunch of like-minded people, you're speaking code. And it's not an intentional code of of something that you would need to crack, like the yeah, crack like a uh, World War Two. I can't think of the code now. Um, Enigma code, not like that. It's coded. It's like woke woke people speaking a code, right? So <clears throat> the establishment speaks in a code. The corporate press speak in a code, and what the code is is whether you know they know not to cover certain things. They don't have to be told. Sometimes they will be. Sometimes they won't be. But they don't really have to be told not to cover, say, the Hunter Biden story. If they have to, then they know that they have to do it in a certain way. Not because they're told, again, not because they're getting orders from Dr. Evil himself. It's that they know they know the goal, and they know when something's going to hurt their goal. So th that's how you have to think about it. Now, the bigger the the move is, the, there is more coordination. But you, let's say, look at the, the COVID thing. You can clearly see that there was money involved. But there's also an opportunity, as our leaders like to point out, to condition the people for their, you know, their great reset and their, their new liberal order, if you will. Um, <clears throat> so that's how it works. And it's why... But the more... If you th go at, at it thinking that... Everything is coordinated... Then you're giving that, that free... You're giving the other side that free conspiracy theory thing. It's not a conspiracy theory, it's, it's reality of what's happening. And it doesn't need to be coordinated. It's just clearly, the evidence is there that everybody is working in a very lockstep way. But, this all hinges on the one coordinated thing. Well, it's not even coordinated, so I'll take that back. It all hinges on them being able to control the narrative. And I'll ask you, what narrative has the establishment been able to hold since the beginning of 2020? Or sorry, 2022. Jeez. Uh, January 6th didn't hold. The second time January 6th came around didn't hold. Ukraine didn't hold inflation is transitory didn't hold COVID didn't hold the new fear mongering of COVID again isn't holding they keep trying to bring it up bugs isn't holding, eat bugs isn't holding uh, the narrative that the economy is doing well when it's clearly 
possibly going into a depression isn't holding. Like nothing is holding. This should be a day of almost celebration. That not only is it not holding, they lost Ro- Roe v. Wade. They lost a, a major guns ruling. Possibly more rulings down the road. People are waking up because they're paying astronomical prices at the grocery store and the gas bills. They can't afford to go to work to make their meager living or they can't afford groceries or rent. So their arrogance and their overconfidence to think that so the plan was, the thought was I don't want to say plan because you again, you're going to like conspiracy minded thing. You know, back when they're having their layout, the what we want to do, their thought is is that we're going to become so desperate from all of these decisions that they made, economic decisions, and and COVID scare, pandemic scare, that would we'd beg for the government to come and save us and do whatever we want, give up everything, all our rights, to just make it go away. But what they're seeing is um, what you're seeing a protest of farmers, Dutch farmers, talking about civil war. You're seeing Sri Lanka collapse, actually collapse. You're seeing the beginnings of what's happening. Obviously, you're seeing the war in Ukraine. And you're seeing the collapse of the establishment's hegemony and leading into a bipolar world. So, they're not winning. Could they win? Yes. But right now, their overconfidence, as I stated before, their overconfidence is their weakness. They think they know what they're doing. They think they know how you're going to behave and how you were going to react and that you will play right into their hands but it's not exactly going how they planned they have no control of the narrative they have independent media the internet is not under their control they desperately need to get under control their only way of doing what they want is to control the narrative control the framing of society Everything is framing. Remember that. Everything is about a frame. Reject their frame. Your frame is what matters. The framing of reality in general. Uh, so, so, even the woke are starting to be a detriment to the establishment. And uh, I think you're starting to see them. You're starting to see that their day may be numbered by the establishment, which would be extremely entertaining. Uh, obviously, that wouldn't be the end of the establishment. We need a far way to go. But let's look at my theory again of CERN. Oh, maybe I should look back at Twitter. Give me a second here. What happened this week? I don't know if I can go back that far. We got Oh jeez, what else happened this week? It's really hard to remember. Maybe I'll go back hold on a second here. <clears throat> Look at some of the headlines. Okay. Oh yeah, right. How could I forget? Georgia Guidestones destroyed. The Georgia Guidestones destroyed. I believe the day of CERN turning on. Anybody knows the Georgia Guidestones were a genocidal
eugenics loving world order uh, guidepost meant to be like if afterwards if society crumbles these are your guide this is this is how you should ru- run the world to keep it the way they like it uh, let's see what else happened Elon Musk was going to buy Twitter and now is not going to buy buy Twitter. Jordan Peterson banned, David Rubin banned on Twitter. the former prime minister of Japan of course was assassinated two days ago you can't even see you can't even remember all the stuff that's happened this week this is sort of my my point uh, who else could think? the UK government dissolving and collapsing this is how crazy it is like so much just happened this week uh not to mention that Joe Biden is a senile old man telling us that you're... Well, that's ten days ago. Anyways. There's a lot that I can't even cover. I can't even remember sort of how insane it's been uh, you can't even ke- keep up anymore what's the point like you can't I almost think you can't do a weekly show like this everything's been it's been too crazy like what is oh yeah you got Canada trying to Canada and some of the states out there trying to push the COVID thing again. Got Oh, look at this. A vaccinated boy aged six has tragically died in Portugal following a heart attack. Shocking. Um, So, it's a wacky world. There's a lot has happened in the last week, two weeks, but the last week. Um, I was going to rant on like each one of these topics. And really, Sunday really derailed that whole thing. Um, oh yeah, we had like a po- police shoot some someone. So, police shot up a, a certain type of person and there was no BLM riots. Tell me this is the same universe. Um, it just, it's... As things get weirder and weirder, you could say, I mean, things haven't been this kind of insane since uh, the peak of the Roman debaucherous 
Empire. So, I mean, you could say this is uh, not a collapsed universe, and that we go through this every couple thousand years, where everybody can act, start going crazy. It's certainly possible. Uh, you know, I'm not entirely sold on the collapsed universe thing. Um, but people are going crazy. Really, so where do we go from here? Our whole society is... Uh, I mean, we're talking about... Legitimately talking about secession of some states. Talking about civil war, you have... You, you have actual journalists. Well, journalists. You have people in establishment... Corporate... Not establishment. Uh, the corporate media talking about civil war. You've got what looks like to be civil war going on in, in, in the freaking ne Netherlands for crying out loud. Um, you've got bank runs in China. You've got food shortages come on the horizon. You've got a stock market that looks like it's crashing. Well, it has crashed for the last six months. It's like a mic crash. It's going to be interesting to see what the stock market does. It'll prove my theory of CERN. If the stock market starts going wacky, as in like wacky up, which make, would make no sense. Well, that's another notch in my uh, my hypothesis. Um, all signs should point that it's going to go down for a while. Uh, there's no signs of... of Correcting any of the mis the, I wouldn't say it mistakes of the, of the things that have gotten to us this point. Now the establishment's in a pickle. It's went too far. They've went too far. They can't. They're they're too far into this. They can't. They can't retreat. I mean, they could. They were, weren't so overconfident, but they're so desperate now that they're losing control. They don't know. They don't really know what to do. So their big play is going to be to completely restrict the internet. Uh, you're seeing Canada, my lovely crap hole country, leading the way in some of this uh, stuff as like a little test bed for the establishment for the West. Uh, with Bill B Bill C eleven, so which might make videos like this for me doing this uh, pointless until. Unless I can escape to a non crap hole country. Um, yeah, so they're going to restrict uh, the internet. They're going to restrict what I can see, what I can post, and essentially what you can talk about. It's their only play, but I just. I, I don't see it working at this point. So, they want to get everybody... Oh, wasn't there a big... Oh, yeah. Sorry. One of the other things that happened is our entire... Two days ago, half my my entire country got shut down economically because of one service provider got... Well, I guess they're saying a, a satellite went down. Uh, but pretty sure it was either a... Uh, planned attack, like a planned internal establishment attack or an actual attack on it. Again, another test run, or at least it shows you how vulnerable they are. The mistake, if it was an establishment attack, is that it just showed uh, the nation where I reside in not to trust their digital currency, which is part of their whole their whole plan is to get everybody into digital currency. Nobody wants to trust digital even less now. So this is how they're overconfident. They think they can just do it and scare you. So they think you can be scared. And the only way to be scared, to have you scared, is if they control the narrative. They control the framing. Uh, that's why they would blame things on Russia. It's not like they want to conceive this huge uh, thing to 
hide their own intentions. No, the whole thing is to create a boogeyman so that you're scared and you need, the, you need what they're going to do in order to protect you from this boogeyman. When it's really them, it's really them. It's their actions. Whether it's it's not necessarily going to plan. It's either their 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 concepts, their 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 policies of of regulating and over regulating and and basically being fascist so what's, what people don't get about like a free market is that if it's a free market is a free market a lot of the stuff wouldn't happen in a free market because the company that's trying to screw over people is going to have competition and they're going to go to the competition right that's the whole point when you have re regulation over regulation 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 that's the indirect way of the government controlling your company is it is basically communism communism is basically fascism so not a huge difference between the two uh, i would argue that there isn't really a difference of the two um not really any nationalism anymore anyways you could also say they say oh fascism is more naturalism but nationalism well, you tell me that the Chinese aren't nationalist. Oh, it's about wanting to hold tradition versus getting rid of tradition. I, don't, I really don't think the Nazis were all about tradition. It was a, there weren't Nazis before the Nazis. The tradition that they wanted to hold on to was a fabricated one, just like all communist ones are. Uh, you could say it was slightly different about pride. Communists are about pride too. This pride of the workers, the people who got oppressed. Same thing with Nazi Germany. It was someone who was oppressing them. It's always about oppression. It's the same thing. Same deal. Slightly different flavors. And now we're in postmodernism where all things are on the table. It's fascism and communism. It's communism and fascism. Fascism. It's fascism feudalism uh, crony capitalism it is not a free market and it hasn't been a free market possibly the entire time it's been closer to a free market a little bit before definitely not a free market for the last my entire lifetime and it's getting worse so they you know they would let you do a certain amount of things so you didn't have to question it and it lulls you into this long sleep of government protection and taking care of you and making the rules and you're so used to it that they try their latest shtick because they want to change things at a rapid pace and they want more control because they're losing control the whole, re the whole reason why they're accelerating this is because they're losing control of the narrative traditional traditional like corporate media is dying and the internet has democratized voices and information and I'm desperate to squash that on any level but it's it's international it's global that's part of their pro the thing that they did is their biggest foil in their plans globalization global hegemony taking over the entire world their world order is the precise reason why with the internet being worldwide as a part of their worldview is the biggest thorn in their side see they would like to think of themselves as all, all seeing all powerful beings who know how to play you but they're not they make mistakes and it's your job to keep pushing for freedom the freedom is what I'm I care about because I don't want to live under fascism anymore I don't want to live by all these fake rules and they're they're 
use as a as a as a spear as a tool as a bludgeoning force of the woke exposes this as well it's more rules follow the rules follow this follow that and it's just, it's to try to control it's also on the surface now it's on the nose it's out in the open it's exposed and they keep exposing themselves because they don't control the narrative they're trying to bully people into accepting a narrative they're trying to bully and bully and bully people are turning off the movies people are not paying attention no they're going to try to go back to the fear thing with COVID. But nobody fears it anymore. No one's talking about COVID. Nobody brings it up. Not anyone that's around me. They don't fear it anymore because everybody's had it. It's not going to work. No. I mean, Canadians are pretty... They're kind of cucks. And the, there's some pretty dumb, scared people here. So, some of them might just go along with it, but they don't fear it. It won't be the same. Everyone's moved on. So, the Democrats and, and the Rhino, so the Uniparty, the establishment, facing major losses come November. And... Yeah, I just realized this really wasn't a recap of this week at all because I totally forgot everything that happened. Um, but there's, I told you it was going to be rants. Uh, where was I? Yeah, so they're going to take a big loss in, in November. So what are they going to do? How are they going to respond to this? What's their next play? I've been thinking about this for a while. And uh, I'm not totally sure what their next play is. Uh, if they fi face imminent defeat, they will try to retreat. But I don't think they think they're losing. I think they need to ditch Biden. And they think they can just replace... They still think they can do whatever they want. Even though they're feeling miserable at it. So they have no self-awareness. So they don't really see that they're losing. And they can be frustrated with certain things. But they think they'll still win in the end. But, I mean, it's all such a big theater the stuff that goes on constantly every day uh, like you can go on twitter and see a million different insane things so I'll bring it back to the CERN thing what world do we live in is this I'll put it to this this is a concept that I just thought of maybe this was always real life just as just an insanity. Without a unifying narrative, this is what life was like. This is what life is like. It's just constantly insanity like, going on around you. Everybody thinking different things. Some people on a call over here trying to get you to do something. Some people over here thinking different way. Like, people vying for control. Uh not being able to covertly do anything because they don't have the, f the full grasp of control that they want just chaos now people want to argue against anarchy that oh it would just be chaos tell me how it's not in chaos now we're in a state of chaos and it's not an anarchy it's not anarchy. It's controlled. It's oppression. It's system. It's state. So you can have anarchy 
in a state, in tyranny, in being ruled. So tell me how it's different than your fears of anarchy. So we live on the precipice of uh, an interesting moment in time. Will the universe collapse again? What will next week hold? Will it accelerate? I certainly hope it will. And we got to think how entertaining this all is while we're battling. How, think about these woke people. And on one level, you have to just absolutely adore how ridiculous they are. It's better entertainment than any movie that anyone could have made. Yeah, no, it's obviously destructive and it's tearing our fabric apart. Or tearing our society's fabric apart. Or tearing the fabric of our society apart. Um, doing damage to kids. Irreversible damage. So I'm not trying to make light of it. But it's insane. All of it is insane. All, all of it is insane. And it's designed to be insane. It's designed to demoralize you. And part of the... De the defense against dem demoralization is to enjoy the, th the theater of them. The ridiculousness. Your defense is to mock and to laugh. To not buy into the frame. So whether this is a new universe or not, you must always remember the previous universe that you are. You must re remember the foundations of reality, whether that's the reality here on this universe or not. It's what's important to you that matters. And you can't control the outcome no matter how much we would like to. We can't control the outcome of, you know, what's happening. We can do our part. We can awaken people. And you awaken people to make them aware of how completely absurd this all is. But how do you make someone who's a part of this universe, if we go with my theory, who's born and raised in this universe and all this seems very normal to them, like, have you ever sat there and talked to a blue person, blue-pilled person, blue person, a smurf, um, and thought, how can you think all, how can you think this way? One second. How can you believe this stuff? How on earth does a person not see through this nonsense or doesn't just look at it and and want to bust out laughing or how do you not like how just how how do you do it well it's because they're this is normal to them it's normal they're not from this universe or they're from this universe we're not from this universe so you could say that there's a growing number of people who are waking up could be the success the amount of people who are you know surviving a, a universe collapse the, the more travelers we're bringing along from each universe that are seeing the differences of this universe and seeing the insanity and, and wondering what the hell is going on they're growing in numbers as each successful universe collapses and we're bringing along people more and more as you will so it's a sort of a different take on, on the red pilling of people um, it really whether my hypothesis is actually right well I'd say perhaps the universe is not like when people say when you collapse the universe you think like how would people how would some people survive and how, how wouldn't but think about the universe as maybe like a fabric. Yeah, you have all this mass and, and atoms and electrons and, you know, massive universe of planets and galaxies and yada, yada, yada. But maybe that's just all in a big fabric. 
scale it out, go above it fast enough, and you're just seeing one piece of hair on a carpet next to another piece of hair on a carpet. That a universe collapsing isn't the complete annihilation of all matter and antimatter of everything you know in like a big explosion but more of a a simple transfer of information from one plane to another and you would have some information loss as you're going from one to another and it's filled up by um, the information that was existing on that plane so think of it as overwriting a file but you would keep part of your like a fragmented drive so you're keeping part of your your files intact and overwriting it with new files think of it like that that's how I view the universe collapsing not in a fire and brimstone uh, or shrinking it down to a singularity in some CGI fantastical show but just a simple you know there you're in this new universe set you couldn't visually be able to see the transfer you're just information being transferred over everything feels exactly the same in your body uh because you're not you're not transferring all that information into a A piece of fabric that's three thousand miles away. Not to use miles in this 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 concept, but it's giving you a an a concept of space. So, like a large space. So, three thousand fabrics of universes beside you. If you transferred through all of those successfully over and over again you know you might have something completely weird like really weird because it'd be so far removed from the area that you are so this could, could explain blue pill people um, and you know it may be a fact that it's not CERN at all that is collapsing universes. That this could be the con this could be the natural state of existence. And the possible error of time. Perhaps time really is information passing from one plane to another plane in succession as one plane collapses on itself behind you as you move into another plane of existence. It's a fascinating thought. That's sort of my theory. Um, So it sounds fantastical and fun when you go on Twitter and say they're collapsing universes by smashing particles together. And the concept, when you say a collapsed universe and you fall into this one, it brings such visual delight to me. Um, but it could just be as simple, simple as that, where you have NPCs. The NPCs are just the natural inhabitants of the existence, existing plane that wasn't there before. Or that that information for that person that it represents didn't transfer over didn't get rewritten and so we're losing possibly people along the way that's why smart people very smart people if you will um, claim that Joe Biden wouldn't um, embolden and embrace the woke yes I still remember you we remember you those very smart people perhaps didn't make it through the veil didn't make it through the transitory stage didn't didn't come with us 
if you will. It's an interesting thing to ponder, and I like pondering. So, I don't know. This was experimental. Uh, I don't know if you like this. Next time I do sort of want to rant about some of this some of the things that's going on, but I don't know, maybe you'll just like me hearing about me rant about stuff. Or maybe you just like watching me paint while I talk in my monotone soothing voice. Either way, um, this is kind of fun. Feels good to just get stuff off my chest. And maybe I'll do it again sometime. Uh, I hope you like it. If you, you do, let me know. If you, if you don't, you can let me know that too. Uh, if you made it this far. The, all the good stuff's at the end. Um, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for listening.